We are in the middle of the second trial, the death of Major Hal, the murder. We, uh, we're trying to establish who the murderer is and we're trying to protect our client, the Spaniard Fox, Juan. And last time we um, had a bit of a, bit of a fight with the uh, prosecutor and the um, somewhat hmm, weird judge, Romulus, or it could be a corrupt judge, who knows. Um, tells off to um, to go, go back to my questions. So here we are. Of course, Your Honor, Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? Yes, I was sitting upon a railing of the Pont des Arts. The Pont des Arts, that's the new bridge, that's just stone's throw from the Louvre's south entrance, correct? That's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. <laughs> Kingfishers, am I right, Falcon? So you would have had plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered and exited the place. Can you tell us who you saw? Well, the Louvre's a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m. I saw the king, Louis-Philippe himself, enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then around 9.30 a.m. I saw the shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness use of the term shifty-looking. It's a vague and biased description. No, really, he looks super shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. And then I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if he were applying something to the flower, perhaps? Well, monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But yeah, it definitely looked like it was putting some sort of powder on the stem. Wow, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct witnessing of the defendant readying the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose was never poisoned and yet, here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. You do? No question, he saw a shifty looking criminal readying poison and cackling near the scene of the crime. That's not believable at all. I think you might be right, I wonder if I have any evidence that calls the Sane's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? You just heard the witness directly describe your client readying poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. Rock, fine, do your thing. Go on, Falcon, go make a fool out of yourself. Alright, this again. I was sitting upon the Pont des Arts at 9 a.m. I saw the king and his entourage enter the building. Then around 9.30 a.m. I saw this shifty looking fox lurking around the entrance. I saw him take out a rose and carefully rub the stem like he was applying some sort of powder. All right, Paul Nazar, I don't think I have anything to say about that. Let's look at my evidence. <clears throat> we got the book, the rose. Here it says that the thorns were coated in poison and not the stem. That could be something to press on. The stem. I guess we should ask about the powder. Monsieur Kingley, you say that you saw a fox rubbing the stem of a rose. Yup, saw it with my own eyes. Um, I guess, are you sure you saw... No, are you sure it was a rose? Maybe it was the chocolate paper? Are you certain that the fox was handling a rose and not some other type of flower? <coughs> Pretty sure the red petals stand out quite nicely on a grey January morning. So you are confident, you are absolutely sure that you clearly saw a bright red flower in the fox's hands. What are you getting at, JJ? Was this through? I'm at a loss here. 
I'm not sure if that's correct, but let's go for it. Prince Juan didn't possess a rose. I have a reason to believe that Prince Juan did not possess a rose at all. I think that he may have been in possession of a sprig of monkshood. Or even just a simple daisy. Really? You're claiming that Prince Juan did not possess a rose despite 22 witnesses testified to seeing him handing a rose to the king? This is a ludicrous line of inquiry. There is zero doubt that Prince Juan possessed a rose on the day of the murder. Agreed. Defense knock it off with his moronic way of thinking. <laughs> okay. I got it wrong, I guess. Do you have another question about the poison rose? Uh, I guess. Although... I could ask about the powder. I'm not sure I have anything, so I guess no. Never mind, I have no more questions about the poison rose. About anything else? About the king? Not really. Shifty looking fox. Maybe the rose. Because of the... Um, I have to try this one more time. <clears throat> Alright, um, are you sure you saw powder? How far away were you from the south entrance? 20 meters perhaps? 30? I'm somewhat doubtful that you can make out powder being applied to anything at those sort of distances. I'm sure I don't claim to have seen the powder itself. I said that it looked like he was applying powder to the flower stem. It could have been a wax or a liquid or whatever. But the guy was definitely putting something on the flower. I see. Well, that's nice and vague. Uh, but no. Okay. I'm done with the rose. Now let's try to press this. Shif shifty looking fox. Sure, Kingley, you claim that you saw a shifty looking fox. Yup, super mega shifty. Um... <laughs> Might be the truth, but are you sure that the fox was Prince Juan? There must be at least 100 foxes in Paris. How do you know that the fox you saw was Prince Juan? Well, he was wearing a suave hat that hanged low over his eyes. I hear that's how they wear them in Spain. I'm not much of a fashion expert, but the rest of his outfit looked quite out of place for the French winter. Is that all you're going by, his fashion sense? Oh, I nearly forgot. I heard him call a passerby Senor. I thought I was peculiar. Well, that's him, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess not. Uh, let's just go with this. But the location is off. Monsieur Kingley, you say that you were sitting upon the railings of the Pont des Arts on the morning of the incident. Yep. Uh, what entrances can you see from that bridge? Monsieur Kingley, you had a good view of the Louvre's south entrance, didn't you? Yup, the Pont des Arts is a great vantage point for seeing the Grand Galerie south side. What about the other entrances? The other entrances? You mean like if you were entering from Tuileries Gardens or the Place du Carousel? Where is this Pont des Arts? Like here's the entrance. Oh, this... Oh, it's over here. All right. No, I couldn't possibly see those areas from the bridge. But of course, that isn't relevant. Monsieur Kingley witnessed Prince Juan entering the south entrance with flower in hand, and that's what counts. Oh, now we can press the book, the page, because Juan had it on him. Uh, what if Prince Juan used another entrance? What if Prince Juan didn't enter from the south entrance? What if he approached a louver from... That would be the Tuileries Gardens to the west. Tuileries Gardens to the west. That's a big what if. Do you have any evidence that Prince Juan entered the Louvre from Tuileries Gardens? As a matter of fact, yes I do. I have definitive proof 
The Prince Juan approached from the west, not the south. Hey, I know what I saw, monsieur. I'm doubtful too. Go on, JJ. Show us this definitive proof that Prince Juan entered from the Louvre from Tuileries Gardens. I got this page. Look at this. A book page? Page 44 off of Don Quixote specifically was found just outside the Louvre's west entrance. This proves nothing. I'm not done yet, take a look at this. Don Quixote. This is the book Prince Juan has been reading in jail since his arrest. I believe he has had it on his person for some time. And yes, page 44 is missing. That was the first thing I checked. You do realize what this means, don't you, Severin? The defendant was present in Tuileries Gardens prior to entering the Louvre. It's not really evidence, is it? You could have took it out. This also means that, in all likelihood, the defendant entered the Louvre from the west entrance, not the south. He couldn't. He could not possibly have been seen by Monsieur Kingley from the Pont des Arts. What? I know what I saw, Monsieur. Fine theory, Falcon. But maybe the defendant took the long way around. One can still travel from Tuileries to the Louvre's south entrance by walking along the river. An extra two kilometers of walking just to enjoy the pre-murder scenery? Let's not say silly things, Cocorico. Okay, maybe the defendant deliberately left a page there to mislead the un mislead the investigation. Now you're the one who's blindly speculating. It, it's not blind speculation, it's a viable hypothesis. You are fond of logic, aren't you, Cocorico? Let's talk about Occam's razor. What's that? When torn between two seemingly equal hypotheses, we must side with the one that imposes the fewest assumptions. Which of these theories takes fewer assumptions? 1. The page from Prince Juan's book fell out on his way to the Louvre's south entrance. 2. Prince Juan deliberately planted the page on the off chance that it would be discovered, then he took the long way around. How dare you, the nerve of you to lecture me on such basic philosophical concepts. I'll stop lecturing you when you stop making such basic mistakes. Monsieur Falcon, please calm yourself. What is the point of all this yammering? The ultimate point is that Toussaint's testimony is fabricated, made up, utter fiction. No, everything I have said is the truth. I suspect that the witness isn't even a fisherman. I'm not a fisherman. See, he admits it himself. Th that's not what I meant. <laughs> what a twist. Uh, I gained a little favor. Prosecutor, you have something that will put this arrogant falcon in his place, don't you? I must concede. You concede? On this point, at least, Falcon's evidence strongly suggests that the key component of Monsieur Kingley's testimony is false. Ah, no! This doesn't mean that Prince Juan is innocent, of course. All Falcon has demonstrated is that this particular witness is unreliable. But I did see something, I really did. Alright, so maybe I didn't exactly see a shifty looking fox. I made that part of the story up. But I did see a swan lurking around the south entrance on the morning of the murder. A swan? Do shut up, witness. Your word is mud at this point. How can we possibly trust anything you have to say? Uh, Your Honor, Judge Romulus, we're out of time. We're ten minutes overdue to start on the... Herr V? What? Tortoise trial. Ah. Is that late already? Curses, I was hoping we could have the case wrapped up in a single trial session. It is a shame, but ultimately, an accurate sentencing is always preferable to speedy sentencing. Yes, alright, I don't need to hear you moralizing. Court will resume this Friday, the 21st of January at 9 o'clock. Don't be late. So I guess this case isn't done yet. Prosecutor, do your damn job. Get this stupid fox a conviction already. I will do my best to ensure that justice is served, Your Honor. Why does the judge want it so badly? A lot came up in that trial, huh? Yeah, no doubt about that. But something's bothering me. Why would that fisherman guy, Monsieur Kingley, lie on the witness stand? Uh, maybe he was coerced? Well, it's possible that he was coerced or bribed. That's just what I was thinking. Maybe the real murderer threatened the fisherman into making up a story about Prince Juan. Let's keep an open mind. Anything is possible at this stage. But to be perfectly honest, something else is bothering me about the trial. Yeah, Judge Romulus. 
and Mademoiselle Signe as well, uh, because she would be the swan. Judge Romulus, he's acting without a shred of professionalism. He's obviously more interested in securing a guilty verdict than he is in discovering the truth, but why? Maybe he has a vendetta against Spanish royalty. I'm not so sure. There must be something else at work here. Excuse me? Mm, uh, excuse me, Monsieur Falcon. It's from Rabbington. Sorry to bother you, but uh, this letter just arrived. I think it's for you. A letter for me? I wonder why it wasn't sent to my office. Have you been demoted to courier status, Rupert? Oh, hush, hush, Therosan. I don't need to be uh, pitied by a first-year dropout. Oh, good comeback. So what does the letter say, Falcon? It's... it's a threat. A threat made with cut-out newspaper letters. Whoa, I didn't know the those things actually existed. Let me see. Falcon, stop your investigation or there will be consequences. Scary. There is no question that this letter originated from Major Howell's murderer. The plot thickens. He or she must be aware that we are getting close to uncovering the truth. Sounds about right, but why would a person write with cut-out newspaper letters like this? Masking one's handwriting would be the most common reason. Although, I can't help but wonder why they would bother, since we don't have any handwriting samples to compare it to. We're still going ahead with our investigation though, right? What would happen if we say nope? I guess Parasan would object. Uh, absolutely. Oh yes, absolutely. If a liar, lawyer were deterred every time they received a threatening letter, they would never get any work done. Besides, with only three days before the next trial session, we can't afford to be worrying about pity things like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Wow, you're right. Let's make those days count. So we got to choose. A new day, January 18th, Tuesday. Um, I guess we can check off all the places. What happens if we go to the palace? Falcon and Sparrison once again find themselves in the Place du Carousel, just outside the Louvre. Oh, we're at the Louvre. Fine. So, which exhibi exhibitions are we visiting today? Um, anything? No. No new places. No new evidence. So, I guess now we're here. Whoops. Um... Let's start at the garden. I think we've bothered Monsieur Robinho enough. Let's move elsewhere. I guess not. Maybe the Grande Galerie, where the murder took place. It looks like that porcupine fellow has left the building. Did you want to ask him something? Nothing in particular. Just wanted some more details on this Renara Volpis, but I suppose we'll have to leave it for now. You already discovered it was the client, you idiot. I guess the developer forgot about that. <laughs> I think we found everything of value here we can possibly find. Let's not loiter. Okay, so where shall we go next? Are we all done here? I guess we are. I hope I didn't waste a day with this. <laughs> oh, I did. Oh god. Stupid of me. So, two days left, January 19th. We better make this count then. Which means... Okay, we can go here without consequences. So let's do that first, let's all. That's strange, I don't see any sign of the flower girl. It's the same dialogue we already had. Uh, let's not go to the library yet. No, let's just check it out. Two fools have returned. What can I help you messieurs with today? Need to know the population of Timbuktu perhaps? Or do you want a rundown of every character in Twelfth Night? Actually, why did I come here? I've already learned everything I wanted to know. Maybe you wanted to take out a book? Don't say silly things, Persan. Come on, we have work to do. 
So nothing here. Let's check out the uh, Justice Palace. A little early, aren't we? Just scoping the place out. Come on, Falcon. We've got investigating to do.